it's illegal for foreign nationals to contribute to American political campaigns. That's what's behind a federal complaint filed against former police detective Ernesto Encinas, lobbyist Marco Polo Cortez, and Ravi Singh for allegedly funneling more than $500,000 from Mexican billionaire Jose Susuma Azano Matsura into political action committees or PACs to support the campaigns of at least four San Diego politicians. But determining who's giving how much money to which candidates through a PAC is a difficult and lengthy process. Here to help sort out this federal investigation and what it means to San Diegans and our politicians is Brian Adams, professor of political science at SDSU and author of the book, Campaign Finance in Local Elections, Buying the Grassroots. Welcome back to Evening Edition. Good to be here. Now, Brian, tell us more about this law that prohibits foreign nationals from making contributions, uh, campaign contributions here. Right, so this is a federal law that says only citizens and individuals who have uh, legal permanent residence or green cards are able to give to American elections at all levels, federal, state, and local. And the basic gist behind this is to make sure that you don't have foreign influences, whether it be by governments or individuals, on American elections. Could you break down for us what an independent expenditure committee is or a PAC? Right. So the money that was given um, by uh, Mr. Rosano in Mexico was funneled into an independent expenditure committee, which is not controlled by the candidate. It's independent. That's why it's called independent expenditure. Um, but it makes uh, it makes uh, expenses on behalf of a candidate. Um, so in, in this, for example, um, Bonnie Numanis was one of the candidates involved. And there's an independent expenditure committee that was spending money on her behalf, but wasn't actually controlled by Bonnie Numanis. How important are these independent committees for uh, financing or funding election campaigns? Increasingly, they're becoming more and more important. You know, 15, 20 years ago, these were very, um, not very big on a local level. Now, significant sums of money are being spent through these. In fact, now typically more money is spent through independent expenditure committees than directly by the candidates themselves. Is it a way to sort of get around campaign uh, finance limits? Right, yeah, so there's limits to how much an individual can give to an individual candidate, right? I mean, so there are lim various limits on that. For independent expenditure committees, the U.S. Supreme Court has said that government can't limit the amount of money that you contribute to that. So if you want to create an independent expenditure committee on behalf of a candidate and you want to give, you know, 100,000, a million, 10 million, 100 million, you can do so. There is no limit to that. Well, the federal complaint alleges illegal campaign funds went to support several prominent local politicians, including Nathan Fletcher, Bonnie DeManis, as you mentioned, Juan Vargas, mm -hmm. Bob Filner, among others. Mm -hmm. But most of these names have come out and said already that uh, they didn't realize that how these com contributions were made. How likely is it that you don't know where your campaign money is coming from? Well, legally, candidates aren't supposed to know what independent expenditure committees do. So they're supposed to be independent. So theoretically, it's very plausible that they were actually following the law. They wouldn't actually know what was going on. In practice, candidates frequently do know what's going on in independent expenditure committees. Typically, they'll have friends of friends that'll be in contact with the independent expenditure committee, and they'll, they'll, they'll learn secondhand what's going on. Well, considering the complexity of uh, finance campaign laws, don't politicians have accountants and, and legal counsel to sort of vet this out? They do, but again, the, the candidates don't control the independent expenditure committees. So their treasurers, their accountants, their, their legal counsel aren't directly involved with the independent expenditure committees. What kind of impact could this investigation have on uh, the San Diego politicians involved and uh, politicians in future campaigns? Well, Bonnie Dumanis is the one that's likely to have the biggest impact because she's up for election. And this is obviously going to be an, a, an issue in the upcoming campaign. The other ones, it remains to be seen uh, how much we learn about what they knew and what they didn't know, what their connections were with the individuals um, involved with this, and there's still a lot of unknowns about exactly what candidates knew when. How about the impact on San Diego voters? Is this just one more scandal that might undermine the uh, political process here and people going to the polls? Yeah, I think people are already so cynical. I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference um, one way or the other in terms of voter attitudes. It may make somewhat of a difference. and It may create a push for greater um, campaign finance laws on a local level. Okay, well, we have a lot more information on this ongoing story on our website at kpbs.org. Uh, professor of Political Science, Professor and Author Brian Adams, thanks so much. Thank you.